In this video, I want to refocus on the JavaScript syntax specifically and uh, the various parts of speech inside of a properly formed uh, statement in JavaScript. So I started by explaining JavaScript by saying that you write statements, each of which are executed sequentially. Uh, and statements are complete thoughts, complete instructions to the JavaScript compiler of what we want it to do for us. And I said the statements are made up of one or more expressions and that an expression is made up of operators and operands. And I just made that statement in passing and kind of blew past it really quickly. Um, but I wanted to take a few moments and explain why that is an important statement whenever we're setting out to write code. And so we've already looked at uh, a couple of different operators. If we're thinking about the most atomic level of our JavaScript statements, we're thinking about in terms of operators and operands. So operators are things like keywords. We've already looked at the addition operator using the plus symbol. We looked at the string concatenation operator using the plus symbol. So that one is doing double duty uh, and, and it will be understood based on the context of how it's being used. And then there's the assignment operator, the equal sign that we've already looked at. And soon we're gonna look at a few other common ones just to start building out a list of operators that we can use to do more interesting things inside of our application. But there's also an operand. So operators are things like keywords and those various symbols that we've already looked at and we'll add more. Operands are something like identifiers, uh, a variable name. We'll, we'll learn about functions soon and functions are another type of operand. And so Unlike keywords and operators in JavaScript, which are fixed and part of the language, we, you and I, programmers, give operands their name. And so by combining operators and operands, we create expressions that are then used to compose statements. And so sometimes it's easy to spot an expression, and then sometimes it's not so easy. But identifying several major categories of expressions uh, we can better understand why JavaScript works sometimes and why it doesn't work sometimes. Uh, so for example, in the English language, we cannot write a sentence, a proper sentence like this, the dog, period. If we said, hey, uh, the dog, some our friend would say, what are you talking about? The dog did what? Which dog? You know, give me some more information, right? Why is that not a proper sentence in English? Because it didn't have enough inside of it to be considered uh, proper. We have a noun, we have the dog, but we don't have any verbs or adjectives or adverbs describing or, or um, you know, kind of giving us more detail about the dog. The same thing is true with JavaScript. So we can't, for example, and let me just create a quick file here. We'll call this expressions.js. So we cannot do something like this in our program, right? Uh, because the JavaScript compiler will say, okay, what do you want me to do with that? Uh, that makes no sense to me whatsoever. I don't know what you want me to do with A. I don't see it. It's not one of my variables. You're not asking me to create a new variable. There's nothing inside of A. A means nothing to me, all right? So at a minimum, we're going to need to either, and these are the types of expressions at, at a very high level, we're going to either declare a variable, so we would do something like this once again, let A, all right? And even in this little tiny um, uh, two-word line of code, there's already an operator and an operand. Here's the operator, the let keyword, and here's the operand, a name we want to give to a new variable that will be created in memory. All right, so that's one type of expression. We're gonna call this um, types of expression. Here we'll just use some comments, types of expressions. Number one, variable declaration. I think I spelled that right. All right, so let's go ahead and just move that up to the very top and say, this is bad. <laughs> uh, and then we'll do something like this. I kind of like doing some ASCII art there whenever I create lists inside of my code. All right, so there we go. The other one is to assign a value. So the other type of expression, we can assign a value. 
So a equals three or four. Uh, and then another type of expression is to perform an evaluation that returns a single value. And so that might be something like, and if we're talking purely about the expression itself, it might be something like that, b plus c. So in a more interesting example, uh, we might do something along these lines. Um, and I'll just comment this out because I want to reuse a, there we go, good. All right, so here we go. Line number 16, I'm gonna go let um, b equals three, let c equal two, and then let a equal b plus c. Now I just wanna focus on line number 19, and I wanna say that there are three expressions in here. Can you find them? All right, well, let's identify them. So number one, we're gonna see that uh, let a, so that's a, a variable declaration. The next thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna perform an evaluation of b plus c, right? And that will basically add those two values together because we're using the addition operator. And then finally, we'll do um, the result of b plus c is assigned to a. So three expressions all combined into a single statement, and there's a lot more going on than meets the eye, but that is the kind of thinking that will help you understand why your JavaScript code works sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. You have to think in terms of writing uh, expressions that do things to form properly formed JavaScript statements. All right, so hopefully that little lesson in syntax is helpful. Let's talk about operators and the different types of operators. And, and again, we've used this collection of five or six operators so far. Let's, let's add to that collection. I'm gonna go uh, create a new file called operators.js. And so um, there are several categories of operators. And I'll just kind of go through them really quickly here. So there's assignment, like the equal sign. It's really the only one in this category, but it's a pretty important one and we've seen it used quite a bit. Uh, there's maybe some other keywords and things that can fall into this category, sort of, but the assignment operator is usually the only one in this category. And then there's uh, arithmetic with which, as you might uh, suppose, would allow you to do mathematical style operations. So that's the plus, where we're adding two numbers together, subtraction, multiplication, that's the asterisk key over the eight on most keyboards. Um, there's also the division, all right? And uh, then there are some special ones like, um, let's call these, and I'll they're kind of arithmetic, but I'm gonna call them uh, increment, decrement so um this is the plus plus and the minus minus and used out of context these don't seem so interesting but what we could do is for example um let's go var a equals one a plus plus and then console.log a all right let's save that and then go over to our terminal and I'm gonna do uh, node operators. All right, and so you can see that we increment the value of A. So let's do this. Let's now increment it one more time and see, and let's save our work here. And then let's run it again. And wait a second, the value is still two. How is that possible? Let's do this. Let's console log a like that. So now we're gonna print the value out twice. We're going to print it out. I thought maybe we would get three, but we didn't. But if we print it out a second time, let's see what value we get. And so when we print it out the second time, we get three. And the reason is this, because this operator, this increment operator, works after the line or after the value is already 
utilized inside of this line of code. So basically, hey, console.log, here's A, and after you print that to screen, then let's add something to it. That's why we're able to see the new value if I print it a second time, all right? What we may have preferred instead of this is to go console.log and put the plus plus before the A. That means I want you to first evaluate the increment of A and then print it to the console.log. All right, so let's save that. Let's rerun this, and now we see three in both cases. The same would be true with the decrement, where we could subtract either before or after the evaluation of that variable. All right, just something to keep in mind. All right, so that's increment and decrement. Um, there's also, going back to arithmetic, there's the modulus. And this will give me uh, the, uh, the remainder amount. So let's go um, var m for modulus equals 10 divided by, whoops, 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 that's not what I wanted, 10 modulus 3, and then I want to console.log m. And just to kind of keep everything clean, I'm going to comment out all of this as well. Keep it around for posterity, but otherwise, that's all I want to see. What will I get back from this, this statement? and I get one. What is one? It's the remainder. So 10 divided by three equals three with one left over. That one is the modulus, all right? And actually, this becomes a lot more interesting and important when we're looping through lots of values and every like 10th or 20th or 100th item, I wanna print a little message to screen to say, hey, we finished processing the, the 10th the 20th, the 30th, the 40th, the 50th item, all right? And I use that actually frequently, so I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of modulus. Let's comment that out. So uh, moving on to the different categories of operators, uh, let's talk about uh, the various string operators. And we've already seen these. So this is gonna be like the literal string operator. We're using single quotes. And then also we saw the string concatenation operator that will take two strings and, and allow them to be appended together to create one new string. Um, other operators, uh, precedence. So we might, uh, you know, order of operations, we actually use this quite a bit, um, even in non-mathematical situations. So for example, um, let's just do uh, var b equals uh, one plus two times three. Now, if you're coming from an algebra background, there's an order of operations where things should be done in a certain order. And I'm pretty sure, if memory serves me correctly, it's been a long time since I've had an algebra course, but you perform algebra before you perform addition. So if I were to do a console.log here, I would expect B to output two times three plus one, so that would be seven. Let's see if my my memory serves me correctly here, and yes, it does. But what if that's not what I want? Well, I can use, just like in algebra, I can use parentheses to kind of control the order in which things are evaluated. Um, so in this case, I would do one plus two first and then multiply that by three, which will give me a completely different result of nine because three times three equals nine. Okay, so we'll use this, uh, the, um, the opening and closing parentheses for different purposes. Uh, for example, um, whenever we want to do console.log, these parentheses are also used as the, um, the function invocation operators, all right? And that just says, here's a function name called log, and we'll learn about functions soon, but I want to actually invoke the function now. And I can even use the function invocation operators, the opening and close parentheses, to pass in arguments. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but again, that is the open and close parentheses. Um, there are other operators, uh, and I'll just um, put them here. They may not make a lot of sense at the moment, but they will soon when we look at decision statements. So there's the logical if, I'm sorry, the logical and and the logical or, okay? So when I want to add 
two things together and evaluate two things together, either one of them needs to be true or both of them needs to be true. And we'll look at that in, in a little while. Um, there's also the member accessor operator. So when we did console.log, if you look at IntelliSense as I hit the dot on the keyboard, there's that period. Why are we using a period there? That allows me to access the various members of this object. And we'll talk about object, and we'll talk about uh, properties and functions or methods of objects soon. But that's what allows me to access the log function of the console object inside of Java JavaScript. So here again, comment that out, but we'll use the period for that purpose. We're going to also look at the code block operator soon. And so, you know, I'm going through all these and I'm saying, hey, we'll look at these soon. Really the point of this exercise is to say that there's lots of operators and we're going to have to begin to identify what all these special characters are. And the only way to do that is to, first of all, learn that they exist, what their function is, and then use them as we're writing programs. Uh, and so um, I think that's really the only thing I wanted to say. I mean, let me just put one more in here. The array element access operator goes by different names, but I'm just going to use that. And so we'll use square brackets for that purpose. So almost every single character, the special characters that are uh, above our numeric values and we can access using the shift key uh, and the various ones that are usually on the right hand side of the keyboard the various braces and brackets and colons and semicolons and and um, all of these are 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 used at, uh, to um, uh, for various purposes in JavaScript uh, and in most programming languages all right so I think that's all I really want to say uh, let's pick back up in the next video. You're doing great. Hang in there with me. We're getting through uh, some of the easy stuff and we're going to start moving on to some challenging stuff here really quick, but you're doing great. See you in the next video. Thanks.